Hi everyone, it's Ben, the Commissions Chief here at Cult of Paint. I thought I'd take a quick break from all the exciting jobs we have on the painting desk here in the studio and have a little chat with you about a subject that's always close to my heart, the Astra Militarum, or the Imperial Guard if you're of a certain vintage like myself. In the last two decades I've easily painted over 30,000 points of guard, both for myself and for other people on commission. So today I wanted to share with you a few techniques I like to use to get my armoured units painted and on the gaming table in that gritty realistic style I like and in a relatively short amount of time. I've always been an Imperial Guard player and all the way back to 3rd edition when I started out in the hobby. In a universe full of terrifying aliens, horrific demons and genetically engineered superhuman space marines, it's the humble Imperial Guardsman that appeals to me the most. The beleaguered underdogs of the Imperium, the Imperial Guard have an element of reality to them that I really like to play on and to use as the basis for the style I like to paint them in. I think a large part of why I'm so fond of this style is the classic Imperial Armour books by Forge World. They were being released as I progressed in the hobby and I was blown away, and I still am, by the fantastic Karl Kapinski artwork plates, particularly in the Siege of Rax books, and the insanely good modelling tutorials by Phil Stokinskis in the Modelling Masterclass books. They've certainly left an impression, as it's an aesthetic I still like to aim for in my personal hobby even now. What I've settled on to convey this is not quite traditional grimdark, but it's certainly more weathered and battle damaged than the heavy metal style with generally more desaturated colour palettes and I incorporate certain weathering techniques and elements more traditionally found in historical military modelling but adapted for painting gaming armies as opposed to display pieces. So with this in mind I was delighted to get started on some of the fantastic new Astra Militarum miniatures Games Workshop very kindly sent us and I've set about adding them to my armies. All of the armoured units like the Sentinel, the Field Guns and the Rogal Dawn are being done in a scheme that allows them to work with both my existing Krieg themed army and my new Cadian one. This is another concession to getting the army painted that bit faster and to get the exciting new units on the table as soon as possible. Now it's fair to say the Rogal Dawn tank has definitely come out to some mixed reviews and at first I'll be honest I wasn't really a fan. It's a very busy model and that didn't really sit with my army aesthetics so I simplified it a bit by cutting right back on all the extras such as the lights, sensors, various extra weapon systems, crew members etc and focused more on the basic hull shape and how best to weather that adding the excellent stowage you get in the kit and some more from a few other guard kits to help with that more realistic battle ready look. I'm now going to show you how I achieve the main armour colour which happens to be the same palette I use on my Krieg infantry to help them tie all together and how I go about enhancing that with some sponge chipping effects and some weathering powders. Starting from a black rattle can undercoat I'm going to airbrush the whole tank with the aptly named Citadel Deathcore Drab. This is a great earthy desaturated green that's got plenty of colour to it but it's also dark enough to be the base colour for a variety of grimdark schemes. I'm applying it here using the Cult of Paint Infinity by Harder and Steenbeck, thinned roughly two parts thinner to one part paint and I'm making sure to get an even covering over the panels but I'm not necessarily worrying too much about the deepest areas of shadow, having the paint a little darker here will only help with the overall effect. Next up I'll apply the first highlight using Ammo Mig Russian Dark Base. This is a nice dark natural green and it's going to highlight the death core drab but it's not too overpowering. And again this is thinned roughly two parts airbrush thinner to one part paint. I'm focusing this deliberately towards the centre of each individual armour panel or plate rather than into the shadows and gaps between them to help accentuate the details of the sculpt and to show the areas of light and shadow. You'll also notice I'm rotating and angling the dawn as I do this to make sure I'm only hitting the areas of the miniature I want to highlight. I'm using the angle of the tank to mask the shadowed areas from the airbrush. I cover this technique in a bit more detail over on our Patreon in the Emperor's Children's Zakaran tutorial, so head on over and check that out if you'd like to see some more. With this stage done, the main colour of our tank, sort of our mid-tone of the scheme, is now in place. I'm going to do a final highlight to really push the contrast between the light and shadow, and then we can move on to the weathering process. Using Ammo Mig Russian Tan, I repeat the process from the previous step, concentrating the paint even more towards the centre of each panel. This is a more gaming model friendly version of the panel lighting and modulation technique often used by military modellers. It is the same principle, but I've simplified it a little bit for my army painting. I really like to use this technique on my gaming miniatures as the, uh, the way you're highlighting each individual panel really pushes the detail and makes it much more visible at that sort of three foot gaming distance that we're used to. 
Um, no matter what lighting you're playing under as well, you can still pick out lots of the different details on the sculpt. So I find it very rewarding in that respect. You can see on the larger blank panels, such as the top of the turret, that I'm using the airbrush to mottle this highlight a little bit to give the area a bit more interest. It's done using the airbrush in exactly the same way as normal, but with a bit more of an erratic pattern to how you cover the area, as opposed to neat, even coats that we normally aim for. And again, this is just another technique that we're using to add a bit of interest to a model in a very quick and simple way. And there we go, that's the armor all completed. We have a nice militaristic color with plenty of contrast between areas of light and shadow and the perfect canvas for some weathering. So let's go add some grime to this tank, it's far too clean for my liking. There are loads of fantastic hyper-realistic weathering techniques out there. Hairspray chipping, chipping medium, oil paint dot weathering, a million different enamel products to name but a few. And we love them all, but however for my army I wanted something quick, effective and robust enough to survive being used on the gaming table frequently. And for this, I'm a big fan of using Citadel's Rhinox Hide and applying it to the model using a piece of sponge or foam. This is a really simple technique that I feel is incredibly effective at mimicking chip paint, general grime, dirt splashes, etc. And it's also fun. You know, simply dip a piece of sponge into the paint, wipe off some of the excess onto some kitchen towel, and start to lightly press the sponge onto the edges of the armour panels. The paint will come off the sponge in a random pattern and it looks really natural, especially when built up in multiple areas. Take your time with this, and less is more. Do a bit, take a look, see what you think, then add more if required. Make sure you reference real world tanks and even old cars to see where the damage or dirt would occur, such as the leading edges of panels, around the track guards, on hatches, on grab handles, that sort of thing. You can see here I've applied decals to the tank and painted in some of the other details, like the tracks and the discoloration around the muzzle of the battle cannon, before doing this next weathering stage, as you want to apply the same level of wear and tear to all the appropriate areas of the tank. The stowage doesn't matter quite so much, as it's going to be in constant use and it's likely moved or replaced fairly frequently. So the last step I like to do is to add a bit more interest to my armour by applying a layer of dried dirt or dust and build that up using weathering powders. I really like this Vallejo Light Sienna powder as it can represent anything from old dried dirt as well as you know, sand, discoloration or even concrete dust. So using an old brush I like to sprinkle it roughly over the desired area, in this case it's on the tracks and the bottom of the side skirts, and then go back and work it into the model. I'll repeat this process a couple of times until I've got the results I'm looking for. And again, just like with the sponge weathering, this is a less is more process, so go slow and add it bit by bit. Once you're happy with the look, you can fix it in place using a powder fixative, or more simply a finely misted on layer of varnish. I usually tap the model to get off any excess between each layer, and at the end apply a fine layer of AK Ultramat through the airbrush just to seal it all in. Oh, and definitely make sure that you put down something like an old rag or a tea towel or some kitchen paper to collect any of the overspilt powder because you are definitely going to make a mess here. You want to protect the working surface, especially if it's like your dining room table. And there we go. The new Rogal Dawn is ready to join either my Krieg or my Cadians on the tabletop. And as you can see, using a few relatively simple techniques and some reference materials, it's possible to get a good army level result in a relatively short amount of time. The Rhinox hide sponge chipping and the weathering powders really do a lot of heavy lifting in this game, and it goes a very long way to getting that gritty, realistic style I'm so fond of. As ever, if you have an idea for anything from a one-off display character to a large army from any game or system that you'd like us to work on, then drop me an email at commissions at cultofpaint.com and we can discuss making that idea a reality. Thanks for watching, and if you've got any questions for us or any requests for further videos like this, then drop us a comment down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you again soon.